Hello and welcome again to Pickle Help Gaming, and I'm your host. Today we'll be looking at World of Tanks Blitz on the Nintendo Switch, a free-to-play online panzer simulator where you shoot at other panzers. It's great fun. Obviously, I would have the case, but it's a free-to-play online game that doesn't have a physical copy. And why would such games need physical copies anyway? Am I right, folks? Yeah, you bet your ass I'm right. After all, I'm the one with the pointy helmet. Anyway, let's jump right in. But first, some background. World of Tanks is a PC free-to-play game in which you participate in online battles and try not to die. Blitz is a mobile game that got ported to Switch and was so goddamn important it was included in one of those shitty Nintendo Direct minis. The Partner Showcase one. The same that had, like, 50 rhythm games on there. Nintendo really needs to get a fucking life, I tell ya what. Jumping in, you have a wide selection of tanks from many different nations. You jump into online battles and fight other people and yada yada yada. It's the same shit from literally every other free-to-play online gaming experience. I mean, structure-wise. What's so bloody different this time other than the fact the game is all about tanks? Well, the controls are different. By different, I mean rubbish. So the game has an old control scheme. When the analog stick is pushed directly forward or backward, it moves forth and back, respectively. But moving the analog stick forward and to the sides makes it turn. So it controls exactly like a tank, but worse. The tanks all have a turning radius that puts stretch limbs to shame. And when another tank is shooting at you, you naturally want to move backwards. But you end up turning as well, so you get stuck in the level geometry and you panic while the enemy tanks take pot shots at you and you end up losing. On the PC original, the tanks have a far greater degree of control, but here it ends up being the death of you, quite literally. The graphics are okay, I mean, they're passable, considering this was a mobile game originally, I guess it's alright. Alright. I said, alright. The sound design is good. If you like the sounds of longmower engines, seriously, they all sound like militarized gardening equipment. Not to say it's bad or unrealistic, it's just an observation. There's also rewards and shit typical of the genre, but who cares? So the game is okay, the controls themselves are fine, it's responsive, it works. But the way the tank moves is god-awful. The graphics themselves are nothing to write home about. The matchmaking is similar to Splatoon 2's, in the sense that it's not skill-based and just piles people of... The only, the only reason that it's that the matchmaking is only slightly better than Splatoon 2's is because the tanks are in tiers, and you want, you know, have a tier 1 tank, you know, those itty bitty light tanks facing off these big, fat, heavy tanks from tier 9, that would be, that would be impossible. But if you own a PC, I recommend the original game more than this. The tanks have a finer degree of movement because Keyboard and mouse controls will always be superior to to uh, game controller controls, even though the people who usually praise PCs more are kind of racist against console gamers, not unlike myself. But hey, to each their own. If you happen to own a Switch and want some hot tank-on-tank -tank action, then I do recommend this game. Unless a better one comes out, which I will be paying attention to see if there is one. Um, and But if you must have tank action on the go, fine. Play it. It's free. It's harmless. doesn't hurt anybody. The microtransactions aren't awful to the point, like, how Activision does it. It's not bad. There's daily rewards that keep you engrossed, or at least engrossed to the point where you want to play it once a day at least once. So, that's it. This concludes our video, or at least my video. I'm the one who makes the damn thing. You are the viewer. Leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.